All right, everyone, we've got Super Mario Bros. 2 USA, the Doki Doki Planet clone up here. I've got with me Glitch Cat, Sven, and Cool Kid for commentary. Some classics of the Super Mario Bros. 2 USA. And we made community. it. Let's By the way. Yep. So I'm going to have to turn off the console and start the replay, and now we should be going. By the way, we just reached it. Pokemon yeah. Blue Tag. Yeah! Thank you so much, everyone. So, that is so exciting. Oh. So, yo. <laughs> so first of all, uh, here we are using Toad in this first level, and you're going to see some double jumps. When you jump inside an enemy's hitbox, you get a second jump. Setting up for a really tricky trick here, you're grabbing the pal as you're coming out and then switching it for a shy guy, and that is going to allow some trickery a little bit later. Uh, one thing to note is that Toad actually runs a lot faster when he's holding something, and there's another double jump inside to get up there. Now he's got the pal inside. Now you know the normal way to get through, you want to use the bombs, right? Uh, but not to blow up the wall, to clip down through the floor. <laughs> And because we brought a shy guy into the fight here, yes. you can just insta-kill Birdo. Yeah. Is that how you do that RTA, cool kid? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but not quite as fast. All right, coming into 1-2, we're setting up for another really interesting glitch now. We're respawning that Pidget on the carpet. When you have two carpets, you get super speed. But now it's really important that we set up on a really precise pixel here because we want to pick up that potion without leaving and then pull this vegetable up right as we're coming out of the door. And that gives us a vegetable that we can take through the door there. Normally, you're not supposed to do that. And since vegetables are always active, you can recycle that vegetable for three hits on Birdo, and he's dead. Yeah, that trick is actually a frame perfect, so it's very hard to do in RTA. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're like harvesting vegetables to throw bombs, and I, weird stuff is happening. So there's a little, uh, you saw that pickup there. Uh, you want to be holding an object because you run faster, and you can yeah. actually pick that up from below. That is how you, you can do that RTA, right? You can just grab it from below like that, because as long as your hitbox contacts. And this, since this is warpless, uh, we're not going to be taking the warp there, but normally you're supposed to go up and get the key at the top of this, but we're not going to be doing that <laughs> because we can take some damage here, and when you take damage with an enemy that's thrown, you can clip right through the floor and get pushed like that. Yep. <laughs> because that screen is hard-coded to go to this area, it just knows to take you when any screen transition occurs. And the orb. So coming into the first Mouser fight now, we have a couple of, <laughs> some little, a little bit of task trigger to get this bomb stuck. And we've got a ninja here, and because that ninja is always active, you can register multiple hits on Mouser incredibly quickly. <laughs> so here comes world two, the desert world, and uh, we're gonna see a little bit more while running and picking up that Cobrat there to run a little bit faster. I'll note that we can drop through enemies, uh, skip a line of digging when we have a shy guy in that level. Uh, but we should go to donations during some of the digging sections. Yep. All right, I just want to thank everybody who made that push for Pokemon Blue possible, because that was amazing. So I want to give everybody a round of applause for a quick. That was great. And quickly, I'm going to explain. There's a donation incentive coming up later tonight. Super Mario World One Mind Hard Mode. One mind means the player control switches back and forth between both players controlling Mario. Hard mode means instead of every few seconds, it'll be every few frames. We need every $35,000 to meet that. It's going to be a lot of fun. You want to see it. So that's the strat you can actually do RTA. You have the star, and a star will insta-kill Birdo. The trick is actually getting the star. And you can actually, there are a couple star kills in the RTA route, right? Yes, there is. So we're going to grab a Cobrat again, and uh, you always want to make sure to pick up an enemy as soon as you can because that's in going to increase your base uh, movement speed. So you really want to be just holding on to something. Really tight platforming here. Um, not a whole heck of a lot of trickery, but some really fast movement. Right there, uh, falling down uh, is faster than climbing down that vine, but uh, we could read some donations again real fast. I have $100 from Wavefront who has a simple question, so I need everyone's help with an answer for this one. Can Taskbot honk? Uh, also, I have $25 from Co Cooper's Coffee. says, my favorite robot is Bender. Bite my shiny metal Tass. Let's go Tass Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a red Birdo here, and uh, red Birdo shoots out eggs and fire. But of course, that doesn't matter at all, because we can bring one of those mushroom blocks up and get three quick kills on that. There's a couple of ladder jumps right there, um, and climbing up to the right, it saves a little bit of time because wherever you climb up, it's mirrored on the next screen, so you actually start out that screen closer to the right. Saves about a block worth of space. You can get ladder jumps, uh, RTA, 
and um, that's when you're standing on the edge of a ladder, it treats it like you're standing on the ground. And fun fact, each character actually has a different frame window to get a ladder jump, and I think Toads is the tightest, if I recall correctly. Yes, that's correct. Mm -hmm. So may maybe everybody would dig a few more donations while we're oh, digging through these. I see uh, what you did got, there. Got any to dig up? I've got $100 from Curl on TV. It says, I, for one, welcome our new task bots being running overlords. <laughs> and as a longtime advocate of our new task bot overlord, I also approve. So you noticed a little bit of hesitation there. Uh, when you crouch in Mario 2, if you wait just a little bit, you'll charge a super jump. And sometimes that's actually faster than uh, any other way to scale a, a vert distance. Picking up that bird allows you to take it through the screen transition. You're not supposed to carry anything through screen transitions, but with some trickery, you can get that. Is that an RTA trick? The bird through the door? Uh, oh, no. no. Oh, definitely not. <laughs> not yet. Not yet. <laughs> Now, this is funny. So we have Cobrats, but when there's three of them, it's Tri Clyde. I don't know what <laughs> naming. That was, that was an immensely fast kill again, just using that mushroom block to get a couple of extra hits really fast. Now, this is such a cool stage. We're going to see a little bit of platforming just to get up here really fast jumps. And um, I think we're, are we going to use the carpet glitch again here, or are we just going to take the regular? Oh, it's mm. kind of like a glitch of carpets and things like that. Ah! <laughs> yeah, so by... I'm not even sure what happened there. <laughs> we, we threw an enemy to the right and then threw another enemy to the left. They, they like, hit each other, but they didn't die, so they started flying up. Yeah. It's a joke. <laughs> a couple other quick kills on Birdo here, getting the egg and stacking up those two mushroom blocks, because otherwise you'd have to charge a super jump to get up to the top of that. We do use Toad uh, for most of this. We're going to use Toad again here, but there may be a couple other characters coming up. Uh, you're supposed to go all the way around to the right of this level, but um, I think Taskbot has a better idea. Yeah. <laughs> again, just using those um, dead enemies to push yourself through the floor. When you take damage and throw an enemy, it can clip through the floor, and it can also cause you to clip through the floor as well. And that's normally a level where you use Princess in the RTA era. Mm. Yeah, the RTA would take Princess over the gap so you could clear that last gap. So Mario's jumps here uh, line up perfectly with some of these things we need to do. He's a little bit slower, but um, a good strat for this level because we want to yeah, get into this room. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if we've mentioned it yet, but when you go up a ladder, if you hit up and down at the same time, which you can't do with a normal controller, then the uh, speed up the ladder goes way faster. So you might see that. <laughs> yeah, so there's some ladder jumps in the up-down right there. A couple of really precise jumps. And again, if you see uh, jumping by a sprite and getting a double jump, that's because you can jump inside the enemy's hitbox to get another jump. <laughs> well, that didn't look very hard. Okay, so we're coming into the second Mouser fight now, and there's going to be a little bit of pause manipulation. What? That causes extra bombs to spawn. Normally, you have to wait for Mouser to throw all those bombs, and it takes many cycles, but yep. a little bit. Is that, how, how is that, how RTA viable is that? <laughs> I haven't tried it yet. <laughs> he just laughs. <laughs> 4-1, the ice level, uh, again, picking up a, a flurry there to move a little bit quicker. This is normally where we would, uh, in a warp run, we would take the, uh, the warp in this level, I think, but uh, we're going to just do the regular warpless route. Let's get some donations in here. Yeah, this is a lot of just kind of running. All right, we've got quite a lot of very generous donations from everyone doing the Pokemon Blue push, and I just want to say thanks once again. But I'm going to highlight a few of the smaller ones here. We've got a $5 from Massive Hawk who said, let's get that Pokemon run. Thank you so much. And we also have $5 from Nats Fan who says, R2-D2 is the best forever, but Taskbot is pretty close. Let's get that Pokemon Blue. So close. You can actually do that little swag strat RTA when you throw that flurry and take damage. Uh, he'll just go right through the floor every time. So another vine jump there and uh, some up-downs to make that faster. And again, uh, exiting in a different spot so that when you come into that room, you're one block to the right. Some double jumps again from these uh, Bezos that are flying around. The, the Tassers are really into the 
like experience of the task and not just going fast, because they like to jump with the music and things like that. So yeah, again, picking up that snippet to run just a little bit faster. Here's where we would normally go into the warp, but instead we'll take the rocket. And he picked up the uh, four cherries, so now when we pick up the fifth one, it's going to spawn a star. Yeah, we're going to need that star to quick kill the Birdo again, grabbing that Shy Guy to move quicker. And there's just enough time with the star timer, even though you have to crouch and charge a super jump there, there's just enough time to get in and kill the Birdo. <laughs> Doing some kind of manipulation is always faster on the Birdos, as opposed to uh, using the eggs. You're going with Luigi for this level. <laughs> yep. My favorite. Wait. Task um, box? Wait, hold on. Excuse me. <laughs> what was that for? Oh. Oh, that's what it was. For. Oh, look at look at him. Look at him dance. Yeah, we're just riding on an egg here. There's really nothing to do except do a little do a little fun little dance. But we need Luigi to cover this big jump right there. And uh, you're supposed to go all the way in the castle and do a bunch of things, but uh, because you can just leap that gap with Luigi. So there's an interesting uh, soft lock in the vanilla game. If you kill more than one of these little frog guys at once, it's possible that the counter won't decrement enough and spawn the door. But of course, Taskbot has no trouble with that. World five. So another floor clip right there, standing on those enemies that are dying and uh, picking up a vegetable just for a little bit of speed through this section. It's always uh, more optimal to be holding something. That was a cool trick right there. You saw the vegetable got thrown, and vegetables, once they hit something, are still active, so they still count as an object. So you could chain multiple hits, or you could stand on them again and pick them up and use them for other things. This is a grayish green birdo that only spits out fire, so it needs to be killed with the mushroom. Pot. So how much of this would you guys say is uh, close with the RTA run? Um, is, it, is, is most of this possible? <laughs> or? The main difference is that I, we don't use Toad for, well, we use Toad for most of the levels, but for this level, for example, we use Luigi, such as the task ends up using Toads for most of this, where we would end up using different characters more often. Yeah, the task really wants to make sure to take advantage of as much of that speed boost from holding things as possible. Yeah, a little bit of up-down uh, up inputs there on a control. You wouldn't be able to do that to scale that vine really, really quickly and combining that with a couple of very tight jumps off the edge. Okay, this part, this part is just kind of showing off how close you can get to the spikes. You would just normally fall the same way if you were doing a run, but a really good uh, door entry there, just landing right on the edge. And again, using the Birdo, uh, two eggs and the fish. Actually, uh, one fun fact about Birdo is the eggs are on a global cycle, so you have to kind of manage your time the whole way there to ensure that once you get to the Birdo, you get a uh, favorable timing for the shot. Yeah, and the task did an intentional slowdown during the, the level to put the best pattern on the boss. Or Mr. Taskball, I should say. <laughs> Again, grabbing that bomb from below. You can actually do that kind of RTA. It's just kind of clipping into the, um, the hitbox of the bomb and then pressing grab at the right moment. It's tricky, but it is possible. A couple of bombs to clip through the floor there. Again, those, those dying enemies pushing you down through the floor. That skips a, a significant portion of that. This part was always really challenging, but a little slide right through that jar, um, that one tile gap, to skip having to go all the way down to the bottom and then come all the way back up. Oh, some really tricky jumps getting right inside the hitbox of that panzer there, and then it was uh, just a little more optimal to charge the uh, super jump. So here comes another, uh, we're going to see another one of those, yeah, the B, uh, carpet stacking. The carpet stacking. Killed the one with the vegetable to bring the other one on, and because there's two carpets on the screen, it just automatically gets super speed. The shy guy gets stuck in Birdo's hitbox, and another quick kill. Some gratuitous clipping at the end, and just to, to, for fun. Uh, this guy is one of my favorite bosses, but uh, unfortunately it's very easy to defeat because those rocks just never go away. So as long as a rock is just being thrown and active there, it'll just register multiple hits. Again, picking up another one of those Cobrats. I think, is there anything, do we have some, do a donation in this one? Uh, we've got a few. <laughs> I've got $100 from the lovely boats that says, we did it! Pokemon Blue added to Task Block, and we're keeping HQ running longer, even though it's supposed to be a speedrunning event. <laughs> you could read it. 
Also, I have $75 from Santa222 says, that donation train for TaskBot went so by so fast. So this one is to start the one mind hard mode train. Yeah. So this is a really tough choke point in the RTA runs. Uh, you really have to be very, very quick to get three hits on that Birdo before it shoots any fire. <laughs> and we get to use Luigi again for this, which is always exciting. This is a really cool level. You're supposed to ride that uh, Ostra there, but if you do, yeah, you're doing some double jumps and then a really quick turnaround to spawn, uh, spawn that Bezo, and you can just jump this out rather than having to um, do the, the long, slow auto scroll. This, you do this RTA. This is actually how the route works. Yes. And now we need another quick kill on this green Birdo, so three three quick hits with this mushroom block. That was very fast. And then being in the right spot where that orb appears and being able to pick up the orb a little bit quicker, that's worth a honk. <laughs> I, just, I love that every time. Yeah. I, I've, I've watched this 10 times very <laughs> So that is, that, that's not the RTA way to do that, right? To get over that wall? Not quite. You would use the potion uh, and throw it up against the wall and then jump off of it. You can get a jump off a potion. Crouching, uh, going through the screen transition there saves a little bit of time because uh, you could slide right onto the top of that platform instead of having to jump from below. Really quick kill in the second try, Clyde, too. So we're coming into the last world now. Uh, this game only has seven worlds instead of eight. And uh, this is kind of a fun way to do this. Instead of waiting for the Ostro, you can just launch yourself all the way up into the air and make it to this rocket ship really, really quickly. Mm -hmm. And this is actually kind of a cool trick. Uh, if you're playing this game at home, I uh, bet you didn't, may well, maybe you knew that you can jump right over this wall and just uh, avoid going into the lower part of that. That's just a regular trick. And normally the RTA run would be using a lot of really tough uh, ladder jumps here, but with the up-down, it makes it a lot easier to scale those ladders. And again, another green, uh, green, greenish-gray Birdo, and three quick kills before it can shoot any fire. And I love the Luigi sprite when he's at half height. It's so great. I like the small, yeah, the big head Luigi. <laughs> it's a toad for the last level, 7-2. Uh, this is Wart's house, castle, where he lives. I'm not sure. <laughs> Palace. Well, we're going to be doing some really cool, uh, really cool stuff coming up. Uh, just again, holding the shot guy to move fast. Some vine jumps up there, and now here is where things get kind of interesting because you don't actually have to transition the screen there. And it turns out that the rest of the palace is just on this screen. So by getting up onto the ceiling there, you can move right over to where we're going to need to be for this birdo. This birdo has a key, and we can just get the key and get out. Normally, you'd have to go all the way through doors and ropes and all sorts of things and get to get through the key door that way. We're going to need uh, one of these for the Hawkmouth fight and a really quick kill. Normally that is supposed to like fly off the wall and attack you, but uh, not today. And this is it. We're here already at, uh, at the Wart fight. Mm -hmm. uh, just got to feed Wart his vegetables and um, end, end it out. Save everyone in the, the land of Subcon where this game takes place. Fun We're fact about the Wart fight, uh, if his mouth is open, you can hit him anywhere on his body. Mm -hmm. There's some RNG manipulation for the vegetable spawns, but beyond that, we just have to kill Wart like normal. Yeah, so if you can actually aim for his stomach instead of his mouth, it, uh, just get the vegetables there directly. <laughs> and time will be on the door entry. It's time. No, not, not yet. There we go. There, there it is. <laughs> Yo, I'd like to give a uh, really quick shout out to Andrew G who worked on this task, uh, has been done a lot for speedrunning over the years and been a really good friend of mine. So, mm -hmm. hey, Andrew, what's yep. up? This has been Super Mario Bros. 2 USA, the task made by Aglar and Andrew G. This has been Glitch Cat, Sven, and Cool Kid, along with myself, Tycoon83, on commentary. Let's head back to you guys.